you. We kind of had a little bit of a blank spot over there, but so good to have you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Please make note of the announcements that are in your bulletin. And again, I want to thank our drama team and the choir and our audiovisual people and all those who helped put together our Living Last Supper. The, the praise and the compliments have continued to come. And if you missed it, you can still watch it online, I believe. Also, I want to thank all those who participated in our sunrise service and helped out and our breakfast this morning. If you have not um, eaten, it would have been a shame because we had plenty, plenty to offer today. Are there any other announcements? Let us prepare our hearts for worship as the light of Christ comes in. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we hope that you feel at home. And if there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know. I invite you to stand as we praise the risen Christ. Let us share together our greeting printed in the bulletin. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. Gracious God, on this bright morning, Christ passed from death to life. This is the Passover of you, our God. We thank you for the gathering of the saints on this holy day. We ask, Lord, that we would understand better the nature of the resurrection and the power you give us to live a victorious Christian life. We thank you for setting us free from our sins and our failures, our mistakes, and our transgressions. Lord, hear our praise as we honor and worship you on this beautiful day. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our hymn is number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today.
may be seated. I would like to extend a special Easter greeting to those who are watching us at home. I hope that you're having a joyous Easter morning. I'd like to invite our children to come up for children's time. Do we have some young people today? Deb. Hey, Buzz. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to wish you all a happy Easter. Sometimes on Easter, people get Easter baskets, and if you got an Easter basket this morning, I hope that you found something sweet to eat. It is so good to have you this morning. I got a test for you, okay? I want you to guess what animal noise I'm making, okay? Oink, 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 oink. Right, good job. Um, yes, you're good at this game. How about, I heard it this morning on the way to church, cock a doodle doo! Yes, very good. How about one more? Hmm. I need some help. Could you come up and help me? Can you think of an animal? Bunny. <laughs> Juliet, you're teasing, aren't you? You're not. Maybe the congregation knows. How do bunnies make noises? Does anyone know? I heard some grunting. Maybe bunnies grunt. I don't know. They hop. Yeah, that's true. They do. That was a good one, but I didn't know what they sounded like. How about meow? Meow. Yes, a kitty cat. Now, you are very, very good at this game, and I am so excited that you are doing so well with all of the questions I asked. You knew the answer to all of them. Well, today, a long time ago, a woman named Mary went to the tomb where Jesus was buried. But she got to the tomb, and the stone that guarded the entrance was rolled away. And Mary came and she had brought spices, which was something they would bring to help um, the dead actually have a better perfume. And she got to the tomb and it was empty. And she's looking around. She doesn't know where Jesus could have gone. And she saw a man and she thought it was the gardener. And she says, where have you laid him? Where have you taken him? Mary didn't realize that she was talking to the gardener. She thought she was talking to the gardener, but she was really talking to whom? That's right, to Jesus. But she didn't know it. But Jesus said her name out loud. Mary. Instantly, she knew who it was. It was her risen Savior who had come back from terrible punishment on the cross to being alive again. And that's why we celebrate Easter. Can you all wish the congregation a happy Easter? Very good. I'm so proud of you. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Easter day. Let's have a prayer together. If we could bow our heads and close our eyes. And you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. May we recognize Jesus' voice. 
And it is in his name we pray. Amen. Great job. You may go back to your seats. You all look so festive in your beautiful outfits. Yeah? Oh, like woof, woof. First reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Solomon bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of the Lord. It has been 2,000 years since Jesus suffered and died on the cross and then rose to life again. His life is the most important ever lived. His death, the most significant ever suffered. His resurrection, the greatest event that has ever taken place. Because Jesus is alive, we can live with hope and peace and power. And one day, those of us who believe in him and confess him as our Lord will spend eternity with him because he lives. Hang up the banners and shout the news, blow the trumpets and horns. Till there is no one who has not heard, we shall not die anymore. I'm here to tell you that Jesus lives, as he lives so shall we. Dying and fear have all passed away, swallowed in victory. Morning has broken the course away, there's no reason to fear. Watching the living among the dead, Jesus the Lord is not here. Where, O oh, grave, is your sting? Come, children, and 
Chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message from God sent to me. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the, of the devil, because God was with him. When we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, they killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name. The word of God. The shriek that Easter Sunday in that Georgia church was heard from the huge sanctuary all the way to the very end of the parking lot. The service had been beautiful as usual. 500 Easter lilies graced the chancel, the windows, and stood all around the baptistry. Another group of lilies were formed in the shape of the cross at the front of the church. It wasn't until after the service, however, that things began to unravel. A sweet little lady asked to take one of the lilies so she could bring it to her aunt in the nursing home. She had paid $5 for it, and she knew that is where the lilies would end up anyway, going to shut-ins and those who could not be in church. Well, before anyone could convince her otherwise, she picked up a lily plant, and that's when it happened. 
Oh, my God, they're plastic. Hordes of exiting parishioners return to the sanctuary. Every last one of the 500 lilies were discovered to be plastic. An emergency board meeting was called. Questions about misuse of funds, deliberate deception, were flying left and right. It was not the kind of Easter that anyone could have wanted. Many years ago, a man and a woman were introduced to one another by mail. He was a soldier in World War I overseas. She was a secretary here in the States. And many letters passed between them, but not a single photograph was exchanged. Soon the man began to fall in love with the author of the letters. He came back to the States and arranged a first-time meeting on Easter Sunday afternoon. She said, I will be wearing a green coat and a red carnation. The man got off the train, and there waiting for him was a large, dumpy, unkempt woman with her fallen nylons encircling her ankles. Her hair was gray and disheveled. She wore a green coat and a red carnation in her lapel. The soldier swallowed hard and determined to keep his promise. And he went up to her and said, you must be Lila. My name is John, and we have been corresponding. I would like to take you out to dinner. Well, suddenly from the shadows, a young, very beautiful woman emerged. And the dumpy woman said, I don't know what this is all about, but I did what you asked me, young lady. But I'm leaving. Thanks for the fiber. And the man's mouth dropped open. Lila said to John, our soldier, I just wanted to see if you were a man of character and that you had fallen in love with the real me. It was an Easter that almost got derailed. Authenticity, whether it be in paintings, relationships, food, convictions, etc., real is always preferred over plastic, genuine over fake. We live in a society where a lot of things are artificial. Politics, sweeteners, flashy fake smiles, cosmetic surgery augmentations, feigned love, fake identities, false promises, fake websites, fake news shows, counterfeit money, fool's gold, astroturf, and peculiar false religions, etc. So many things that are surrounding us are artificial and not real. Through the years, people and critics of all kinds have contended that the resurrection of Christ was not real. And you know the story. Don read one of the more familiar passages. At our Easter sunrise service, we read the story of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb alone. The disciples stole the body. They paid off the soldiers keeping watch. They made up stories. It was all faked. Jesus did not really die on the cross at all. He recuperated while he was in the tomb by himself behind that big rock for three days. No food, no water. He had it rough, but he, he survived. Well, we can trust in the reliability of the gospel accounts because all four were written by an eyewitness, a person who had first account or knew someone who had first account. Despite the individual perspectives of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but we can trust the testimony of those that said that they saw Jesus afterwards. They still would be persecuted. Some would die for their faith. There was no reason why people should fabricate such a thing. We can trust the words of Jesus who had predicted that all of this would happen as well. And there are even hints in the Old Testament. 
from Job, the book that I'm reading in my devotionals, the Psalms, the prophets, that the resurrection was a part of Jewish religious views. And we also have, as I said this morning, 2,000 years of church history to confirm the reality of Christ's resurrection. Most of us are familiar with the story of Lazarus, whom Jesus had brought back from the dead. Martha, sister of Lazarus, was confronted with a question from the master. Do you believe in the resurrection? And she affirmed it, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection, and I am life. He that believes in me will never die, but have eternal life. Eternal life is the gift of God that comes to us through the shame, the humiliation, the pain, and the rejection that was the cross of Calvary. Eternal life begins when we receive Christ. It goes on in the lives of believers, but when we open the door to Jesus and receive him, that is when our eternal life begins. He is the crucified and resurrected one. One of the things that keeps people from trusting in Christ is that they're afraid that they'll lose their true identity and become part of a cookie-cutter Christian network. But nothing could be further from the truth. Life without Christ, that is artificial. It's riddled with guilt, rejection, fear, self-hatred, pretenses of all kinds. But life in Christ is self-actualizing. It is a process that is in progress. Because as we mature, we become the person that we were meant to be, not a copycat of someone else, not the person mis uh, misguided parents thought we might be or what our husband might wish us to be. We become our real self, our better self, our renewed self. A story is told of a Muslim man who converted to Christianity much to the dismay of his neighbors. And a good friend spoke to him and said, why have you done this thing? He said, sometimes in your life you come to a fork in the road. I came to such a fork. I wasn't sure which way to go, but when I saw that on one side stood a dead man beckoning to me, and on the other side of the road was a man beckoning to me who was very much alive. I chose the road with a man who was alive. His name is Jesus. The world represented by powerful politics, religion which embroiled faithful people in a straitjacket of legalism and greed, they are the people that fueled Christ's death. When we partake of his life, we partake of reality, of peace, of an authentic faith that will carry us through and over the storms of life. We thank God for spring being finally here, for the flowers, for the renewing of nature, but that alone is not Easter. Let us remember to celebrate and live authentically the message of this Easter day. He is risen, he is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to take up your bulletin and we will share a confession of sin and be given an assurance of pardon. The Savior asks, O oh my people, O oh my church, what have I done to offend you that you prepared a cross for your Savior? I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter, deny, and abandon me. I sent the Spirit of truth to lead you 
but you close your hearts. You quarrel and are so divided. Repent in the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous one who has risen from the dead. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Let's all stand together as we sing the Lord of the Dance, number 261. Job. You may be seated. I invite you to collect your thoughts for a moment. And if you have any prayer requests, to go ahead and share them with us 
that we might agree with you in prayer. I bring a pencil, it walks. I bring a pen, it walks. Okay, well, I have to rely on my very bad memory. Oh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Linda brought me a very serious prayer request this morning. Uh, David Cook is in the hospital. He is terminally ill, and Linda and Andy have asked for prayer for David. This morning I got word that Reverend Elizabeth Felicetti was taken to the hospital. Her congregation, St. David's Episcopal in Richmond, is a sister church to ours in the sense that I've worshiped there and have many friends there. And if you could remember Elizabeth, she actually um, resigned this past Friday for the end of May, thinking she would be able to do Easter service this morning, but the cancer had, had spread all over her body. She is a young woman. Please remember her in your prayers. Is there anyone else that has a prayer request? Yeah. Larry. Thank you, Sharon. Someone else? Yeah. She is indeed. Yes. Does anyone have a, a, a testimony to share? Some, some good news that has happened Easter week. Easter people, raise your voices. Something good? My godson and his family, all 10 of them are sick. If you could remember them in, in your prayers, they were going to be here this morning and Thursday night. Jake and Sarah and the kids. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we celebrate the great victory that you have accomplished. We thank you, Lord, that you laid down your life and then you took it up again, all for our benefit, all for our sake. Lord, this demonstration of love is something that we cannot really grasp or comprehend but it is a gift that we receive Lord in all humility thanking you Father God for sending your one and only begotten Son Lord we know the Via Dolorosa was a hard road to walk and being lifted up on display mocked scourged humiliated. We can't imagine that either, Lord, and yet you endured it for our benefit. God, we thank you for this beautiful day filled with sunshine. Father, for the saints that have gathered, Lord, together to praise and honor you. Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts, but we also come knowing that there are those in our midst, Lord God, who need your hand of blessing to be upon them, your hand of healing, God, your comfort, Lord, the consolation of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up the following people to you, and we do not want to neglect, Lord, those that are written on our prayer list. God, those for whom we have been in prayer these last several weeks and months. Touch their lives and grant them peace. But we pray for the Voglers, for Jake and Sarah. We pray earnestly for David, God, and for Larry. Lord, we thank you for Marcia and her faith and for the care that she received, Lord, at Southside. Bless her, Lord. And be with Sylvia, God, as she recovers from a fall. Lord, strengthen her. 
And Lord, we lift up Greg and Christy to you. Lord, we cannot imagine, Lord, the depth of what they are feeling right now. But we pray that you would overshadow them with your spirit. God, that you would comfort them, Lord, in the deep recesses of their hearts. God, we know that you are a God of resurrection. And one day, Lord, this family will be reunited with this loved one, Carly. Oh, God, be with them this Easter season. We thank you for the ministry of healing the broken heart. Lord, for all of those needs that are, Lord, bouncing around in our heads this morning. Lord, some perhaps we don't even want to mention out loud. But Lord, as we walk with you, our risen Savior, we know that you will attend these prayers and answer them in your good timing and in your sovereign way. We thank you for, Lord, you knowing everything about us from the soles of our feet to the very tops of our heads, all that we go through, those valleys which we walk, those mountaintops that we scale, the good things in this life, and Lord, even the hard and the bitter things, you don't leave us, God, but you carry us when we are slow and weary and so very tired. Thank you, God, for imparting to us a renewed faith, a resurrected faith, a faith that can move mountains. Lord, touch all that are in need in our community. We thank you for leadership. Lord, we thank you for the hospitals and the schools. Lord, the caregivers and the first responders. We thank you, Lord, for all the teachers and uh, administrative staff in our schools, God, that laid down their lives, Lord, repeatedly for our young people that they might be educated. Lord God, we thank you for Easter Day, for the trees that are in bloom, the fragrance of the lilies. Lord, bless your people this Easter Sunday. And now, have you, you, as you have invited us to pray in the past, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to share our um, bold face print prayer in the bulletin, and then we will go ahead and take up our morning gifts, tithes, and offerings. Our Easter Sunday prayer, together let us share out loud with our brothers and sisters. God of power and majesty, with the rising of the sun, you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you on this bright day for all of your gifts of new life. Especially, we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives, for loyalty and the love of friends and family, for the newborn, the newly baptized, and those now in your eternal home, for the renewal of nature, for the continuing witness of the Church of Christ, God of eternity. You are present with us because of Christ rising from the dead, and you persist in lifting us to new life in him. We bring to you our prayers for this world in need of resurrection. Especially we pray for nations and peoples in strife, for the poor and the impoverished at home and abroad, for those we know in particular circumstances of distress, for the diseased and the dying, for all who follow the risen Christ, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Our ushers are now at the doors. Let us take up our morning gifts, tithes, and offerings. Thank you for your faithfulness and the gifts that you give of your time, of your prayers, your gifts, and your service.
among people who we hope to bring to a knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray these things in his name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our closing hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 89.
to introduce a new kind of service for next Sunday. This is a very, very, very ancient service, and it's called Holy Laughter Sunday. It used to be in the old days in Europe that people would tell jokes because the joke was on Satan when Jesus was crucified. He thought he had won, but God had the last laugh. So I want you to come prepared next Sunday with a G-rated joke to tell. Gail, did you hear that now? <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for all that you have done to make this Easter, Easter season so beautifully blessed. Thank you for all of your gifts. Let us receive the benediction. Now may the blessings of Almighty God, who grants you an authentic faith, with the true Spirit of God resting within you, go forth from this place in joy. In the name of the crucified one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.